July 30th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Galatians chapter 3 from the New Testament. You foolish Galatians, who has cast a spell on you? Before your eyes, Jesus Christ was vividly portrayed as crucified. The only thing I want to learn from you is this. Did you receive the Spirit by doing the works of the law, or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish? Although you begin with the Spirit, are you now trying to finish by human effort? Have you suffered so many things for nothing, if indeed it was for nothing? Does God then give you the Spirit and work miracles among you, by your doing the works of the law, or by your believing what you heard? Just as Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness, so then understand that those who believe are the sons of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, proclaimed the gospel to Abraham ahead of time, saying, All the nations will be blessed in you. So then those who believe are blessed along with Abraham, the believer. For all who rely on doing the works of the law are under a curse because it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not keep on doing everything written in the book of the law. Now it is clear no one is justified before God by the law, because the righteous one will live by faith. But the law is not based on faith, but the one who does the works of the law will live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us, because it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree in order that in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham would come to the Gentiles, so that we could receive the promise of the Spirit by faith. Brothers and sisters, I offer an example from everyday life. When a covenant has been ratified, even though it is only a human contract, no one can set it aside or add anything to it. Now the promises were spoken to Abraham and to his descendant. Scripture does not say, and to the descendants, referring to many but, and to your descendant, referring to one who is Christ. What I am saying is this, the law that came 430 years later does not cancel a covenant previously ratified by God, so as to invalidate the promise. For if the inheritance is based on the law, it is no longer based on the promise, but God graciously gave it to Abraham through the promise. Why then was the law given? It was added because of transgressions, until the arrival of the descendant to whom the promise had been made. It was administered through angels by an intermediary. Now an intermediary is not for one party alone, but God is one. Is the law therefore opposed to the promises of God? Absolutely not. For if a law had been given that was able to give life, then righteousness would certainly have come by the law. But the scripture imprisoned everything and everyone under sin so that the promise could be given because of the faithfulness of Jesus Christ to those who believe. Now before faith came, we were held in custody under the law, being kept as prisoners until the coming faith would be revealed. Thus the law had become our guardian until Christ so that we could be declared righteous by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. For in Christ Jesus you are all sons of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's descendants, heirs according to the promise. God, thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to earth to live a perfect life, to to then ultimately be the perfect sacrifice for us, for our sins, for our transgressions, for all the past, current, present, future sins that we have chosen. God, thank you that we don't have to live under the law anymore. But that you sent down a perfect sacrifice instead to take care of all of the sins for all time. 
In this chapter it says, But the law is not based on faith, but the one who does the works of the law will live by them. I can't imagine, since they can't do sacrifices anymore, the perfect lamb has already been sacrificed, so they can't do sacrifices, they don't mean anything anymore. And it means that all of those laws, hundreds of them, all of those laws have to be perfectly kept in order for there to be salvation. Or as one of my commentaries puts it, to live eternally. And since we're nowhere close to perfect, no one could do that. Which is why you <laughs> loved us enough to send your only son to his death for us. Not just to his death, we have to remember that. Because as though, even though the death was incredibly painful beyond anything that most of us can imagine today, it truly was the fact that he took on all of our sins, he rose from the dead, and he ascended into heaven. All of those very key parts to this process of forgiveness, grace, mercy, salvation, justification. God, I thank you that you love us beyond anything that we can imagine, that you love us enough to send down the perfect sacrifice for all of our horrid choices. And then on top of it, to provide us freedom, not just freedom from our sins and the incredible weight of that, but the freedom to live eternally with you, praising you, worshiping you, glorifying you, God. I will never understand even a tiny smidgen of the love that you have for us. It is truly overwhelming. But I am incredibly grateful for it, incredibly thankful for it, and all the blessings that come with it. God, I ask that my life today reflect the honor of being your child. That my life today reflect the honor of having your son die for me. That my life reflects at least a small amount of the love that you have for us. God, I love you very much. In your son's name I pray. Amen. <laughs>